All right, so I just want to film a quick video here for everybody in regards to what me and Annie worked on with her golf swing. But I'm actually going to relate this to a lot of players because I think a lot of people can benefit from this, okay? Whenever you're looking at the movement of the club, you have to remember that it's not just the movement of the club that's important as it relates to the golfer. It's also how it matches the body motion. You know, there is always more than one solution to any problems you're going to have with a golfer. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a golfer who's a little bit shorter, a little bit laid off. The golfer doesn't have a big shallowing effect, right? And this golfer has a ton of body rotation coming down really quick. So they don't have like a slide and a sit where the hands can drop before the golfer rotates open. Let's say this golfer just has a ton of body rotation really fast. Well, if I just spin out from here, right? In theory, the club looks like it's in a good spot. But if I rotate really quick with my lower and my upper half, hands are going to get way out in front of me. And the club can actually come down a lot steeper than it you thought it would have from such a good backswing position, right? If I just spin out, this club all of a sudden actually looks like it's going to cut across the ball. I'm going to suffer from pulls. I'm going to suffer from slices. Well, there's two real options you can have with a golfer in a scenario like that. The first option would be you keep the backswing exactly where it is, and you can just get them to add a lateral component. And that lateral component kicks them into a little bit of trail side bend. The extra trail side bend drops the hands and club a little bit more. And now you take that golfer who from here spun out and the club gets really steep. And now you're getting a little bit of lateral, getting a little bit more trail side bend. Hands of club are dropping a little bit more to the inside. And then you add the rotation in a little bit later. Well, now all of a sudden you got the club to shallow out through a downswing change. And that certainly isn't a possible option. But you also have a backswing change that can also do it. Meaning... Instead of trying to change the way the body's working coming down, and there's always an element of risk involved of trying to add some trail side bend where the golfer just feels like they get stuck and then it gets really hard to square the face up. Like if I just try to do that change that I just spoke about, it could feel like I'm just trapped from the inside if I overdo it with speed and just hit big blocks. A different change would be you keep the downswing the way it is, the way the golfer has a lot of rotation with a little bit less lateral and the hands work out and the club works out a little bit more than most golfers. And instead, you change the alignments of the club in the backswing to shallow out the shaft a lot later into the downswing, meaning the golfer won't get steep on the ball, but you're not actually changing the downswing, you're changing something on the way up. So instead, you have the same golfer who was here, and now instead, let's say we get the club a little bit more down the plane line, almost even a little bit across the line. Well, what we know from being a little bit shorter, but also being a little bit across the line, is that even if this golfer shallows the club, it's not going to happen like this in two seconds. It's going to take a lot more time before the shaft actually gets there, right? There's a lot of distance to travel. It's not going to happen immediately. And so if I get this club for this golfer a little bit more across the line at the top or feeling that way, the club shallows a lot later into the transition, meaning early in the downswing, it might look a little bit steep, but late into the downswing, it's going to drop to the inside. Now, in most cases, a golfer being here and then dropping the club into a late shallow position gets them stuck. They swing too far from the inside, big blocks, big hooks, it becomes a whole mess. But in a case of a golfer who rotates really well and has a little bit less of that lateral component on the way down, a little bit less of a Rory McIlroy type look and a little bit more of what looks like almost a spin out, well, if you get their club in a different spot at the top, now this club shallows, but it gets shallow a lot later into the downswing. All of a sudden, you're taking a golfer who spins out and because the club shallows a lot later, they don't get steep into the golf ball versus a golfer who's here. And if they spin out, there's nowhere really for the shaft to go. It just works out in front of you too fast. So all of a sudden, what you're seeing is that you're looking at a golfer with two very different solutions, both of which are equally viable, in my opinion. Number one, for me as a coach, I would have a discussion with a player on which one they feel might be the best long term for them. Number two, you can certainly test both out in a short term plan and see which one delivers better results. And you can commit to that one longer term. And number three, you also have to take into account how long it's going to take the player to make that adjustment. Do they have the ability to practice often enough to make that change? If not, I might choose one versus the other, depending on what the player feels. But there's always a discussion that goes back and forth. And usually that it will happen if both options are equally viable. You know, there's not really one that stands out. And for me personally, in that scenario, you can really fix both. Obviously, there's a lot that takes into account here. You know, the launch conditions are super important. The contact point super important. You know, I'm not going to just blindly choose one over the other. Obviously, there's other factors involved, but both options can be potential solutions to the same problem here. So as this relates to Annie's golf swing, really what we did was we took her golf swing 
And rather than us trying to change the way her body moved coming down, which she basically had the same pivot for her whole golf career. So rather than trying to just make her feel super uncomfortable with how she's coming into the golf ball, because she's somebody who always has had a lot of rotation of the body and not a ton of like lateral and side bend. Well, in her case, it's a lot easier to just change the bag. Swing because trying to change the way you are coming down is going to feel super uncomfortable. It's going to feel super timing based. And, you know, she's not necessarily going to control her low point very well doing that right away. So for me personally, in that scenario, for her, the context was let's just change the alignment of the club at the top of the backswing so that we can get the club on a different plane at the top so that the club shallows a little bit later into the downswing, which in theory moves her path to the right. It gets the club more shallow late in the swing, which for her works because she rotates really, really well. If you do this type of adjustment with a golfer who doesn't rotate very well, the late shallowing move is going to kill them because they're going to get stuck from the inside. But if you give it to a golfer who rotates a ton, well, now you can keep the club on a better plane here and the rotation can offset the late shallowing move. So it's all relative to the player that you're working with. This is the whole fun and the idea of matchups that we talk about all the time.